Today I'm going to show you how to acclimate a dog to the stem function on an e-collar. Now you can either do the stem function first or the vibration function first, and that's really just dependent on you know what your trainer wants to do or what you want to do. If you want to see vibration, we have another video showing you exactly how to do that, but today we're going to use the 280C and we're going to start her on the stem function. Now as we do this, there's a lot of ways it can be done. A lot of trainers start acclimating a dog to the e-collar while using the come command, and that's just not my favorite way of doing it. What we generally will do is we're going to use the heel command. So to, this is a Dogtra 280C. I'm just turning it on here. Uh, first thing I do is I make sure it's working. You can probably hear the vibration next to my mic there. Um, and I also turn it down to zero for right now. So if I were to push the correction button, nothing would happen. Now, first thing I'm going to do is get the dog fitted for it. You're going to see this strap is going to be obnoxiously long for now. That's okay. Uh, if the dog is keeping the collar, we would cut this strap. So now I'm looking for a good snug fit, which I have there. I want, I want to make sure I'm getting good contact. Really, without a doubt, the biggest issue with e-collars is uh, bad contact. It causes just, they work sporadically. So then you don't get a proper correction. And then people end up turning it up too high to try to get a response from the dog and then uh, accidentally making them nervous. So uh, really watch for that. Make sure you have good contact. You shouldn't be able to get your fingers easily underneath the contact points. So what we're going to do to acclimate to the stem function is we're going to start really low. I've got it at zero right now. Everyone is different. Always put this on yourself first. So what I would say is put it on your arm and, or neck and know what it feels like. I can't really feel anything until an eight. And a 10 is the first thing that makes me feel kind of like a tens unit at a chiropractor or a doctor's office. 10 is the first thing that I, it really catches my attention. Anything less than that, you know, eight, I can notice seven, six, I can't feel whatsoever but every dog is different. So don't just assume because I said, I can't feel a seven that she can't. Uh, every, you know, every creature feels this differently. The goal here is we're never looking to hurt the dog. We're never looking to scare the dog. That's why we acclimate properly. So what we're not looking to do is let her be bad and then correct her. That's not really what e-collars are about. E-collars are about breaking focus. That's what they do. So the idea is we're at the right level that just catches her attention. So now we're gonna start healing and I'm gonna work with the e-collar as I'm healing. And all I'm gonna do is if you, generally if you would give your dog a tug back and tell them heal if they were to forge ahead, I'm just gonna replace that with a little tap on the collar. So I'm gonna turn it up to a two, which I'd be shocked beyond belief, if no pun intended, if she were you know, able to feel or even notice, but we'll start there. So I'm gonna tell her heal, we're gonna start walking. When she forges ahead, I'll give a little correction. And this is not a before and after video, so you're going to get to see all of this today, which means the video will be a little bit messier in the sense of we're going to walk together, but you'll get to see it all. So we're going to go and start healing. Bambi, heal. Good girl. And let's just head down this way, camera person. Good girl, Bambi. Good. Hey, Bambi, heal. Heal. Bambi, heal. So there, I just tapped for the first time and no response whatsoever, which is not surprising because we're on a two. So now I'm gonna move it up to a four. Bambi, heel. Good girl. So I haven't tried the four yet because she's been perfect. Bambi, heel. Still haven't tried it yet. Bambi, heel. Oh, what a good girl. So Bambi's making this challenging on me because she's being so perfect right now. Good girl, Bambi. Heel. Heel. So there I just tried a four to catch her attention when she didn't make a perfect right turn. And if you were watching closely, it did not catch her attention. She didn't notice it at all, and that's fine. Gonna move to a five. Heel. Good girl. And I'll let you know when I try a five. I haven't done it yet. Bambi, heel. So right there, when I couldn't catch her attention, she was looking that way, I tried a five. She didn't notice it. Heel. Good girl. Bambi, sit. Oh, you good girl. So we tried a five, no response. So now I'm gonna move to a six. When you do this, don't be in a rush. So it'd be easy to go from a six to a seven, an eight, a nine, just to see if that works. But we're really looking for the lowest level that's gonna catch your attention, and this is not a race. Bambi, heel. Heel, heel. So there, when she forged ahead of me, Bambi, heel. I gave a little tap and told her heel. She di didn't catch her attention whatsoever. We would know, like you'd see a little twitch of the ears or she would like turn her head. There'd be some indication she noticed something happened, but she just didn't. Heel, 
Bambi heel. So there, I just gave a tap on a seven, and that's the first thing I think she noticed. Uh, I can't say with certainty because it's only happened once, but it did seem like she kind of slowed down a hair. I'm gonna make a right turn. Bambi, heel, heel, heel. Bambi, heel. Good girl. Bambi, heel, heel, heel. Sit. Okay, I gave a couple taps on a seven there, and I didn't really see a reaction, so now I'm gonna move up to an eight. Bambi, heel, Bambi, heel, heel, heel. So now Bambi is distracted by someone behind us, which is perfect. So here, Bambi, heel. She's ignoring, I'm trying to catch her attention. I gave a tap on a 10, no response. Bambi, heel, heel. So that tells us 10 is not the number. Bambi, heel. All right, so I just gave a tap there and a 13, and there is still zero response. One thing we can do, Bambi, sit, is check the fit. Hey, Bambi, heel, sit, and make sure we still like the way it's fitting. I would say that we do, still snug, good contact there. What can happen is you put it on sometimes and it shifts a little bit so you feel like you have great contact, especially happens when the dog is sitting down and you put it on and they stand up and their neck moves around and all of a sudden the fit's not what you thought it was, but this feels good to me. Bambi, heel. Come on, good girl. Bambi, heel. 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 So there, 14, gave a little tap and Still no response. Heel. Good girl. Okay, so Bambi was distracted by a person behind us. And when I turned and told her heel, Bambi heel, um, and she didn't come, I gave a little tap and that was a 19. And that time sure looked like we had a response. Bambi heel, heel. Okay, so right there, I don't know if you could see that. Um, we without a doubt had a response on that one. Bambi heel. So for this exact moment, come on Bambi heel, 19 is her working level. Come on Miss Bambi, there you go. You did great, yes, you did great. Okay, so we have it now set at a 17. So I've only given uh, two little uh, taps on it that, you know, that, that she could feel. So she did absolutely great right there. So she could, you know, she could feel it at seven, or I'm sorry, at 19 and I dialed it back to 17. Now we're gonna start using this on the come command but we've dialed it in. And so the reason we do that is every dog's different. So although the e-collar doesn't hurt at a low level, it's new, it's surprising, it's different. So the last thing I'd wanna do is be at the park and do this and have her get spooked. Like, God, what happened, right? It just, it's surprising to the dog because they don't know what's coming at first. And then what, what are they gonna do? They might take off running, right? So even, and even if you have a long line on, or even if you're in a fenced in yard, you always run the risk when you're doing this with cum of it stressing them out more than it needs to. Heel is a great calming technique. That's why we do it this way. So if Bambi were to get nervous or stressed, we can use heel as a calming technique to calm her down. And then once she's doing well with it, we can go to you know actually work on the cum command, which is what we're gonna do now. All right, so we have Bambi and Anakin loose in the yard now. If I wasn't in a fenced in area, I would absolutely use an e-collar. I'm sorry, a long line just for safety along with the e-collar, but we have it on. You haven't missed a thing, so I haven't used it whatsoever since we just really were working outside and then came you know, outside the fence and then came in the fence. So now I'm gonna try the come command here. I'm gonna have reasonably high expectations. If she doesn't listen, I'm gonna tell her no along with the correction. And I want you to watch carefully because we might only get one or two goes at this. She might not listen once and all of a sudden become an angel, so watch carefully. I'm not gonna push it unless she messes up. Bambi, come. No, Bambi, come. There you go, sit. Hey, no, Bambi, come, sit. <laughs> Bambi. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna unpack all of this, Bambi, out. So we can see Bambi's excitable. Bambi, come here, come, sit. All right. You're free. So there, not perfect obedience, nothing even close, and that's okay. It's important for you to see this part of the process. That's why we're not doing a perfect before and after where everything is clean. Let me break down what I saw though. She didn't listen because she was playing with Anakin. No surprise, she was you know, very busy and very distracted. When I said no, and I gave a correction on a 17, she stopped what she was doing and she came to me. That's awesome. That means we're at the right level. 
Now, when she got there, then she got distracted by the ball and we lost control for a second. All of that's okay. Have reasonable expectations of your dog. She's a young dog. She's in training. She, if she was perfect, she wouldn't be in training anymore. We're going to do it again. And I want to get to the point where I have clean obedience. But honestly, that's secondary right now to acclimating her to the collar. So I could put this ball up and that would stop. Or I could correct that a little sterner and that would stop as well. I really don't care. The, to me, that's all meaningless right now. I just want her to make some little mistakes and I want to see how she acclimates to the collar. <laughs> so I didn't do anything there. She was just probably anticipating. It's very, uh, very common dogs will get in training mode after a certain point and just follow you. Bambi, come. Good girl. Hey, sit. Yes, what a good girl. So collar was not used that time at all, was it, Miss Bambi? You're free. So I would like to get one more mess up and see how that goes. Bambi, come. Good girl. There we go. Good. Come on. Sit. Yes, what a good girl. That was perfect. Free. So this is what the process looks like in a nutshell. Now, all I'm going to do is spend some more time in the yard with her, calling her over and over again, praising her when she does well. If she doesn't do well, I'm going to tell her no with a little tap on the e-collar. We're still at 17. I'm glad I dialed it back from 19 because this is catching her attention perfectly. And how long this process takes, it just depends on your dog. So I don't trust her on the e-collar yet, right? You know, because here we've caught her attention in a, you know, in a calm and quiet yard. What happens if a squirrel goes by? Do I trust her at a 17 there? Probably not, right? And then what do I do? Do I turn, like, what do I turn it up to that's the right level to catch your attention? I don't know the answer to that yet. We have to kind of work to that point. So this is, uh, you know, her working level that catches her attention. But now maybe later today, there's a new dog out here running with her and they're wild and crazy and that doesn't work. And we might have to step it up to catch your attention in a really kind of high energy situation. And you have to figure that out through time. Nobody can tell you if 17 is your working level, what's your kind of more consequential level? Is it 25? Is it 35? Nobody knows that until they start working with the dog. Take your time because you need to keep your dog safe. So it can't be so low you don't catch their attention, but you also are not looking to scare them. So you can't just crank it up to 35 and think that's going to be the right number. You have to really work at it. If you have questions, drop us a comment below. There's a lot of ways to train a dog on an e-collar. So if you're watching this and it's contrary to something else you've seen and you want to know why, ask. I'd love to explain it to you. Thanks for watching.